like a, a cruise missile with wings went right there and slammed right into the Pentagon. Huge explosion, a uh, great ball of fire, smoke started building out. Shortly after September 11th, as what usually happens, many conspiracy theories began to emerge as to what really happened on September 11th of 2001. And because many of these theories were not grounded with any evidence, we didn't really pay too much attention to them. However, in February of 2002, my attention was drawn to the following website, entitled Hunt the Boeing, Test Your Perceptions. Now, the original website was completely in French and was released by the French and drew some very serious questions as to what had really happened at the Pentagon. I mean, after all, we had all seen the big hole that was created by the 757 that had slammed into the Pentagon at 9.43 on September 11th. But some of the photographs that were shown on this website raised very serious questions as to whether or not that's exactly what had happened. Some of these photographs showed a smaller hole. And in some cases, showed that there was no way that a 757 could have created this damage. So we began our own investigation, and that started by taking a look at some of the magazines that we all saw at the supermarket checkout stands shortly after the events of September 11th. As I began pouring through the photographs, I had one goal in mind, and that was to prove the French wrong with their website, Hunt the Boeing. After all, there must have been some photographic evidence that showed that a 757 had hit the Pentagon. But as we went through all these photographs, we could find no pictures whatsoever showing a tail, a nose, a fuselage, wings, engine, wheels, luggage, seats, nothing. There were no photographs showing any recognizable wreckage from a 757. Furthermore, when you look at the size of the hole at the Pentagon, it was approximately 65 feet across, and the height of the Pentagon was approximately 73 feet. From wingtip to wingtip, a 757 is 124 feet 10 inches. From nose to tail, a 757 is 155 feet and 3 inches in length and the height is 44 feet and 6 inches. However, when you look at the hole at the Pentagon, you'll find that it's only approximately 65 feet across. How does a plane of those dimensions fit into a hole only 65 feet across? Upon further inspection, we found that the damage at the Pentagon was completely and totally inconsistent with the damage of the planes that had hit the World Trade Center. I mean, after all, the planes that hit the Trade Center created a fire so intense that it fatigued the steel and collapsed the building, or so that's what we were told. And yet when you look at the left side of the Pentagon, you'll note that there is very little, if any, smoke damage or heat damage at all. On the third floor, it's very plain to see a file cabinet with a computer monitor. Neither of them are damaged. On the second floor, you can see a wooden desk. It hasn't burned. And on the first floor, a very curious sight indeed, a wooden stool with a book that is laying and open. The pages aren't even singed. Now each of the planes involved in the September 11th attacks had embarked upon transcontinental flights, which means that they had a majority of their fuel left over when they hit their respective targets. That means that approximately 8,600 remaining gallons of fuel would have been ignited on the 757 that had hit the Pentagon. Again, we look at the photograph and ask ourselves, is the smoke and heat damage consistent with that amount of fuel being ignited? Ms. Therese Sagné, a certified environmental specialist and a member of the Environmental Assessors Association, sent us the following letter after a brief conversation we had on the telephone. She had said to us that the amount of fuel that would have been left in the aircraft that had hit the Pentagon would basically have reduced that section of the Pentagon to rubble and would have burned for days. 
and that 8,600 gallons of fuel had a BTU rate of 86 million. She also stated that looking at the total weight of this aircraft in conjunction with its velocity, the Pentagon should have been reduced to the thickness of a pancake. Also, the fuel spill of 8,600 gallons would have posed a very large soil removal and disposal project since the contaminated soil would be considered hazardous waste under Title 40 of the Code of Federal Regulations. Also, looking at the total heat value output of the JP-8 jet fuel, at 86 million BTUs, the temperature of the fire at the Pentagon after ignition would have been in excess of 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. You could expect this size of involvement to last for days, and it would be visible for miles. It's uh, 11.47 a.m. on 3-8-2015. After, oh, I'd say, oh, a good two days, three days now, working on uh, how an airliner penetrated into the Pentagon, uh, I came up with just a little idea, just kind of jumped in my mind uh, because I've been reading some other articles where uh, the United States military designed uh, drone missiles, uh, bunker busters that resemble American airliners. And uh, it took me some time to find this. And uh, I'm just going to let y'all make up your own mind. You look at the time stamps. We reduced the, the video. We slowed it down to 23.33 seconds, uh, which increased the slow motion perception of the video to approximately 26 minutes. So we had to do, we had to do some cut and rips to get it all to fit in there. But uh, the object that struck Pentagon, in my view, was not a Boeing airliner. The object that comes in from the right-hand side has a cone shape. And uh, approximately three minutes ago, we found the cone-shaped item, the UFO, if you wish, and it's a drone. Uh, Booker uh, Buster missile designed by the United States government. Enjoy the clip.
American Aerospace Defense Command is charged with defending North America's airspace. On the morning of September 11, 2001, Vice President Dick Cheney was in control of NORAD. This was the first time in U.S. history that a president or vice president was in direct control of the military agency. NORAD was founded in 1957, and generals always had the power to shoot down or intercept hijacked aircraft. But on June 1st, 2001, just three months before 9-11, Dick Cheney ordered Donald Rumsfeld to allow him to take control of NORAD itself and the shoot-down procedure and remove that power from the generals so they could do nothing. We're going to take a closer look tonight at another example of where, despite the conventional wisdom, there were people in the United States who actually were preparing to defend against the kind of attacks which occurred here on 9-11. The North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD for short, has been defending the skies over the U.S. and Canada for almost 50 years, 46 to be precise. The USA Today reports that in the two years before the attacks on September the 11th, NORAD conducted exercises using hijacked airliners as weapons. One target was the World Trade Center. Haters. But there was some. Nobody in our government, at least, and I don't think the prior government could envision flying airplanes in buildings on such a massive scale. But that turns out not to be true. U.S. military planners did envision and practice those very scenarios. As reported by USA Today, North American Aerospace Defense Corps, NORA, conducted exercises with fighter jets. Simulating hijacked planes flown into the World Trade Center two years before the attack. 